We're here at King's College London with Dr. Sue Sentence, who's Senior Lecturer in Computer Science Education here, and the designer of the BCS Certificate in Computer Science Teaching. It's that that we're going to be talking about now. Thank you very much for having us here. Thank you. Tell us why the certificate was set up. What were you trying to do with this? Um, well, it was literally set up in response to things that we were, that, that teachers were saying when I was running CPD sessions because teachers have been attending a lot of CPD mm -hmm. and were saying, "Well, I can have some accreditation for for you know for what I've been doing," and also for in order to give um, teachers through CAS uh, an idea that um, that they'd achieved some sort of standard yeah. that made them feel prepared for the curriculum. And also to complement the Network of Excellence um, Master Teacher Programme, so that if you went to, if you were learning through attending sessions with your master teachers, face-to-face -face sessions, then you could produce something that then accredited you um, afterwards. So those kind of three reasons, really. And there are three strands to the certificate, I think. And what are they? So yes, there were three parts. Okay. We call them. The first part is. It's about um, continually learning and mm. reflecting on your professional development. So for the first part, you um, have to um, show that you've done at least 20 hours of professional development in computing. And more importantly, you have to reflect on it and the impact it's had on your, your, yourself and also your learners, how it's impacted on what happens in your classroom. Um, and the second part is about your technical knowledge. So you have to be able to um, produce a, a working piece of software, a working program. And um, the reason for that is because you can often go on a course, you can have 10 weeks of learning Python, but then actually then not feel confident the to, to yes, do a GCC yes. control assessment task. Yeah. But in, in order to have to, to do a task, then that's actually how you really gain that confidence and knowledge in programming by having to, to make something yourself. And it's two things, it must be robust, it must work, and it also must be useful. Uh -huh. So the idea is that you're actually creating something that isn't just a sort of a dummy task that nobody will ever need, okay. as some things are. In sort of Being able to implement bubble sort wouldn't count. Yes. Well, I think if you can use that as a as something that you're in your teaching, you could use a live okay. demo of bubble sort, right. <laughs> then that might be useful. I mean, yeah. you know, as an A-level teacher, that's what I used Fair to, enough. to yes. do. Yeah. So, um, but something that you can actually use. So creating a teaching resource, but, oh, writing a program which which essentially produces a teaching resource, that would be okay. Yes, yes, yes that okay. would be fine. We'll talk more about that and, in a moment. Tell us about the third and part. And the third part oh, is about is. pedagogy. So, um, you know, it's, teaching computing is not all about your subject knowledge, it's about how you can teach it in the classroom. So, um, we, the, the third part is to do a little classroom investigation on a particular aspect of pedagogy and um, then to sort of report on that. Um, in a quite a lightweight way, it's not a big research exercise. It only needs to run to three or four pages. But what we're looking for is that your your sort of thoughtfulness about the pedagogy you're using for, for teaching computing. Really interesting. Thank you. And I think now that there are two pathways through the certificate. Yes. So initially, we just had the independent okay. route. I should also say that behind the certificate, we have a, a merry band of e assessors that uh, assessed um, teachers and it was the, the based around a model of formative assessment. Okay. So the idea of the original model was the independent route where you submitted drafts of what you'd done mm. and you had feedback on uh, one or more drafts from your ESSO who might be at a university somewhere helping you finally tune your program so that your program was better or you use a function you know, to make it more efficient and, and that sort of thing. So that's the original idea was the independent route where you submit your evidence when you're ready and you get feedback on drafts. We've now introduced through um, demand another route called the guided route where you have you can achieve your part one, your 20 hours of CPD, through attending sessions um, lead in towards part two and part three that right. we actually run ourselves. And these are um, evening webinars so we have Duncan Maidens and Dave Ames doing Python programming and Jane Waite doing Scratch and Pedagogy for Primary Teachers. We have Andrew Chismadia doing a pedagogy course in the evenings um, and so uh, and little homework tasks to do in between. And so this is a, a, a more sort of handheld route. 
so that by the time you finish the guided ex sessions, you should be ready to start like, creating a draft, yes. and then you kick into the normal system yes. with your ESS. So that's how that works, and that's been very popular. And the last two or three times we've had to, we've had to um, cap the guided route um, for secondary teachers right. because we've reached the, the maximum Lots of number of people that, that before the deadline. So, Apologies, CPD. Yes, yes. Well, it's really, you know, the, the people running it are, are, are you know, real leaders in our in our CAS field. If you do the independent pathway, some of the CPD has to be face to face, doesn't it? Why is that? Yes, so we, we include a variety of face-to-face -face and 20 hours is the minimum mm. and most teachers come up with way more than 20 okay. hours. Most teachers have been doing lots of CPD yes. for the last couple of years. Yes. Um, but we do insist that at least 10 hours of that is face-to-face -face. Yeah. and um, I would really like to see all 20 hours of it being face-to-face -face because I actually think that um, the, 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 going to hub meetings, I mean this is what CAS is about, meeting with people, networking, going to the, your local CAS conference, going to a hub meeting, that all counts, going to your master teacher sessions. You meet other teachers and that is also professional development, talking about what you're doing with other teachers. Part, part of that is through face-to-face -face, um, networking and meetings and sessions. But there is also a lot that you can learn on um, online courses, and there's nothing wrong with MOOCs, and also, you know, I'm aware that lots of teachers are sitting working through mm. loads of books and their own materials. So we want to we want to be able to, um, in a balanced way, to accredit that kind of CPD as well. Yes, because yeah. folks, um, well, it's not long to acknowledge that there are such things as learning styles. Some teachers yeah. might prefer to engage in CPD in one format rather than another. Absolutely, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, returning then to the second part of the certificate and the programming, what sort of thing are people doing? Um, quite a variety of things. Though we've seen lots of quizzes. Of course. Lots of people yes. doing, and, but in different forms. Yes. So um, primary teachers doing um, making programmes that are spelling tests. And, Which is uh, not easy, because no. the one thing about a spelling test is you cannot simply display the word on screen and say spell. Yes, <laughs> yes. So um, lots um, of different kinds of, of, of ways of, of um, testing students yes. on different things. Other people have done things about a recording student progress or more administrative type um, things to sort of right, to support yes. their, their homework. Creating new sims. Yes, or, well, well, right. you know, but um, um, uh, sort of tools that they might use yes, in, yeah. and, and uh, you know, somebody made an app for, to, to, um, for acceptable use agreement um, policy for their school. So, yeah. so I mean, you know, there are, there are a variety of things you yeah. can do in that area. And then also, you know, sometimes you use things that, that are demos, like a rock, paper, scissors game that's been a demo for a sort of control assessment exercise. Um, and being able to do, you know, a really good and bells and whistles version of something that the students will have to do is useful in your teaching. And, um, you know, being able to have a program that demonstrates stacks and cues or the Caesar, yes. uh, Caesar cipher. You know, it can help you in your teaching. Course, so yes. programs that do simulators, yes. national lottery simulator. I have for something that I'm not quite sure whether teaching was, but I mean things that things that illustrate the point that you're, mm. you're can be good use mm. in teaching. Can be um, good teaching resources. And again, this idea of code comprehension coming before code composition, being able to show students something that you yourself has made as a teacher, that must be a good thing. Yes, and I also think we are. You know, we are role models yes, to students, yes. and if we're going to tell everybody that they should become programmers and they should learn to program, then we should be able to say that, A, yes, we are able to do that, but secondly, that, yes, it's useful. You can, yes. with your yes. programming skills, you can do things that are useful in your, in your everyday life, and, the, and otherwise it's not just an academic exercise. So that's really important. Yes. The third part of the certificate then focuses on research projects into computing pedagogy. What have teachers been looking at? So we've had some really interesting projects and they just reflect what teachers are actually interested in in the classroom. So things like um, teacher-led versus exploratory approaches to programming, um, using flowcharts to support algorithmic thinking, um, a couple of projects around drag and drop block-based type um, approaches versus text-based approach approaches, um, uh, the use of tech buddies to teach code in primary so, schools, 
um, the role of computational thinking in uh, the acquisition of spelling rules, um, supporting numeracy in computing topics, paired programming as a method of teaching to code, is as a method of learning to code, and approaches to teaching sorting. That's primary. a huge variety. So, yes, and okay. teachers are choosing these topics for themselves. This is this is something that they are interested. in. Yes, it's a completely research. free choice. What a great opportunity! Yes, that they have yes. they get the recognition for doing that. Sort of thing. Yes, but I don't want people to be put off by this part of the of the certificate because it's not a full blown master's dissertation awesome. and research. Yes. It's literally an invested, trying something out in your classroom, reflecting on how useful that was, perhaps getting some student work to demonstrate what students have done, um, though keeping it all anonymised, etc. Yeah. We don't need pages of academic reference. You're not expecting the literature review or no. the well it's documented methodological or methodology. Yeah, no, it's about your own yeah. um, take on pedagogy in the story. classroom. Exactly. Yes, yes. Okay. And I maintain that structured observation is a, a valuable source of data for teachers in the classroom about what is actually going on. Mm -hmm. So how does this particular certificate fit in with the other qualifications or CPD opportunities or accreditations that a teacher might be working towards or might have? Okay, so it's not a teaching qualification per se, That's, I mean, it doesn't give you qualified teaching status, but it's a professional qualification. Mm. And that's why it's accredited by BCS. And actually, when you achieve the certificate, you have a year's free membership of the BCS to, uh, to as, well, as well after having completed yes. it. So it fits in um, as a complement to your, uh, your academic teaching qualification. And we think this is very important in terms of whether the, the landscape of teaching, whether the College of Teachers, and looking at the potential idea of the chartered teacher, yes. that to have a professional qualification in your subject will actually mean something, and that's what we want to be able to give teachers. So there's an online platform to support all of this, this learning. Can you show us how that works? Yes, I can. Um, do you want to have a look over Please. here? So um, we use Moodle, so we have a Moodle environment for the certificate, and we have a section on each of the different parts that a teacher will do and then a section that starts you off and gives you some milestones, a little diagnosis tool to test your, your knowledge initially, um, some video and paper guides. Can we have a look at the diagnosis plan. Um, This is the, the one that BCS um, oh, yes, has yes, developed yes. through um, Gatsby. Uh, so it goes to the BCS site, um, and some things to sort of start you off. And then inside each part, there's information about what you need to do for that part. Mm. There's forums so that you can discuss with other people, mm. um, some, some help on each section. And then we've got submission links where you can uh, put, uh, 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 upload your part one and part yeah. two and the drafts and proposals and things. That you and need feedback to do. is done via the Moodle system. And all feedback is done through um, uh, the Moodle messaging. Yeah and through the Moodle assignment system yeah. so that we can, we can track who's, you know, who's had feedback when. And we um, expect that from your assessor you would have feedback from your draft um, in, within a week and from a final piece of work within two weeks. Yeah. And assessors are used to it, work coming but in in sort of drips and drabs. Graded, is it? They're not getting marks. No, it's, this work, no, it's a pass-fail yeah. and we have clear assessment criteria Basically, for the programming project, the, the criteria are different at secondary and primary. So a primary teacher should be um, having programs that have got variables and iteration and using different data types and that sort of thing in there. Whereas for a secondary project, we'd expect to see some saving to file or database, um, some, you know, some persistence, and a sort of either a menu-based text system or a, a, a GUI or something. to the standards for so, a piece of GCSE. Work, yes, so. so we call it just above key stage four, but what, okay. what you have a really good A star piece okay, of work fair enough. would be yes. your secondary goal. Yeah. Yes, so that's the sort of standard that we're aiming for. So, what sort of feedback has there been from the teachers that have engaged with the certificate? Well, we've had um, good feedback from the, the teachers that have, have passed. Mm. Teachers are very busy, yes. so um, we, we haven't done so much extensive evaluation because it's about supporting the, our efforts are mostly towards supporting the teachers on the, on the certificate. Um, but the, we have get feedback when teachers have passed the certificate 
so often they're very pleased with their achievements yeah. and they you know are able to um, put it on their CV and you know can, can their head, let their head teacher know that they've got it and so it feels like an achievement and often they've learned a lot through it by having this process of the draft um, yes. um, comments on your work so your programming you know you might be pointing out to somebody that they need a function where they've got a or a, or a file where something's hard coded and so they often you don't usually get that sort of feedback on your own mm, work quite, when yes, you're working yes. through a set exercise yes. that you've got to do you might get comments on your teaching but not on your subject knowledge yes yes so i think um that, that we're getting feedback around that um but i would say there's probably a, a few teachers maybe some listening watching this this clip who have, who are still doing the certificate mm. who may feel that they're kind of you know a bit stuck oh. with it or you know sort of getting something I would say if you're on the certificate and you don't feel you're making sufficient progress do contact your e assessor mm. you know to sort of support on because that's what they're there for yeah. in getting you going again and the other thing I would say in terms of um, deciding which path of the certificate that you mm. you would be interested in is that the if you don't have good subject knowledge in computing, I would recommend that you went on the guided route okay. because then you could have the support. If you go on the independent route and you don't already know much about programming, then the year starts ticking. You have a year to do it and the year starts ticking and you need to go and um, you know, avail yourself of CPD opportunities mm -hmm. because you're expected with the independent route to be able to present the work, the draft work that you've been working on. Yeah. So when you um, do the independent route, you can use CPD that you've taken up to two years right. beforehand. So you could be attending CPD sessions. So a teacher who's already been going to master teacher led training or hub meetings would count? Yes, hub meetings will count. Others who's been taking an active responsibility for their own professional Absolutely. If they've been doing that, then the independent route might very well suit. Absolutely. But so, yes. Otherwise, the guided well be the best option. Yes. So go to on the independent route when you feel you're quite ready, you know a little bit, you know, you know enough about computing to start on that programming project. Um, otherwise we have all these this expertise in the guided route. So excellent. This sounds like it's such a good program. It's really very interesting to hear about. Yes, yes, we're very we're very um, pleased with how it's gone and there are new developments coming ah. with the certificate. <laughs> are you allowed to say anything? I think so. And it's very exciting news that the, the, B, the BCS certificate is going to be um, embraced more fully into the BCS suite of uh -huh. qualifications. And a product manager has been appointed full time wow. to work on the certificate and really grow it and maybe look at an advanced uh, level certificate for A level teachers and, and other developments and develop the guides route yes. so that we don't, um, you know, so that we have enough capacity to, to yes. meet the demand. So, do watch this space, okay. lots of exciting things happening on the certificate. Thank you. Yes. Don't miss out on Computing at School's great content here on YouTube. Subscribe to our CAS TV channel.